sounded so good as breakfast with Christ on the shore. Breakfast will never be better than this, than breakfast with my risen Lord. After an evening of fishing gone bad, Peter and crew felt dismay. Then seeing a man on the shore up ahead changed everything that fateful day. Friends Hello and welcome to our video blogcast, Come Have Breakfast. I'm Pastor Colson and Today I'm joined um, live with Eric and Annie Pilson. And Eric and Annie are, have been missionary partners of ours, serving overseas. I'm excited what God is doing uh, with their ministry. Can you tell us a little about, about the ministry you're doing there in Taiwan? Yeah, uh, good to see everyone and uh, looking forward to seeing you in person soon. Mm -hmm. uh, we work in northern Taiwan as church planters. So our main focus is on planting and establishing new churches uh, local churches that are uh, all in Chinese or Taiwanese, and uh, yeah, it's been great. Um, we have been in Taiwan six years, mm -hmm. uh, full-time as missionaries. In the first two years, I was focused mainly on language study, but after that, we began a church plant in uh, outside of Taipei City called Grace Church. So we launched about two and a half years ago. So most of our time has been spent with the church, mm -hmm. uh, growing the church, and launching and then uh you know all the things that go into church planting and we hold all kinds of events to meet our neighbors wow. um yeah and raising kids <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is a full-time job in and of itself <laughs> yeah. now how long have you been serving there in, in, in the specific area you're in now uh we have been in it's a place called sign shots outside of taipei in new taipei city mm -hmm. we've been there three and a half years a little longer uh, so we got there and we were just me myself and Annie mm -hmm. and then a friend of mine named Martin who grew up in Argentina but he's a local Taiwanese guy mm -hmm. so it's basically just the three of us from the beginning and we wanted to establish a church we had a vision for that mm -hmm. so the first year we spent mainly just doing evangelism getting the word out we had a Friday night meeting every week so yeah, all of our energy really went into the church, mm -hmm. the church plant. These mm -hmm. three and a half years. So it's been it's been a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not easy, but it's been very fulfilling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. to see the Lord at work. Right. You've all been involved in some pretty creative ways of doing ministry, and I, of course, mm -hmm. I follow you online and read your your letters, your your mission letters, and all. Tell me a little bit about some of the creative ways you found to minister to the people there in, in that region. Yeah. Well, I mean, people in Taipei are a lot like people in America. They have uh, certain interests. One is coffee. Okay. Yeah. So everyone in Taiwan loves coffee. That's one thing. And they love uh, baking, baked goods, oh, okay. cakes, cookies, mm -hmm. uh, brownies, cheesecake, everything. But a lot of people don't have an oven in their own home. So they're interested in learning how do I bake, or maybe they're going to take a class. So actually, one thing we did was a baking class, or several baking classes. One was American apple pie, and we had some missionaries come in, and uh, actually they're, they're kids. They've got five daughters. Teach them how to make an apple pie. So a lot of people are signing up for that. And then we kind of share about the church and what we're doing. This is all before we launched, which is kind of getting the word out. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, yeah, I had a coffee car, I guess you could say a coffee bicycle. So every Saturday afternoon, I would go to the same place and just share coffee and share stories about our right. work. You have your, um, it's a bike called Mocha. It's a giant brand and he would put all of his coffee gear in this wooden box and he uh, put it on his bike and he has this little shop outside of a real store. Oh. <laughs> he just use this camping gear to heat up the water and grind his own beans. Wow. And, and yeah, so yeah, it's like a whole neighbors. setup. So you're yeah. a barista. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so I was always really, when I lived in California, I learned a lot about coffee. Oh, okay. And I was like getting yeah. into specialty coffee. And in Taiwan, everyone's crazy about it. So I just thought, hey, this is a great way to interact with people. Yeah. They can get a great cup of coffee. And mm -hmm. while you're making the coffee, you got to grind the beans, heat the heat the water. It takes about ten minutes for the for the whole process. 
That's so when you talk to them. Yeah, you share. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And they always want to ask That's questions. Great. So it's a way that instead of approaching someone on the street right. and try to right. start up a conversation and they would feel very uncomfortable, they kind of mm-hmm. come to you. Right. You so drown them with um, they feel yeah. a little bit intimidated, like, what do you want? You know? <laughs> sure, <laughs> but, sure. But if you have some common interest, like a more natural way to approach them, mm-hmm. usually they're pretty um, open. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, That's yeah the great. other thing we had was um, Annie was leading a mm-hmm. Grace Mommy group. So mm-hmm. it was for moms in the community. Mm-hmm. And, you know, everyone, a lot of people in our community have small children, so they want to learn about how do I raise children. So we were using some gospel center material from Paul Tripp. From Paul Tripp. Oh yeah. So yeah, a lot of a lot of uh, the outreach was through Annie's kind of just meeting moms in the community. It's great. And it's easy to break the ice because you've got a stroller and you know you, sure. you see someone else with a baby. Right. You just click right away. Wow. It's great. <laughs> and your kids become friends too. Thank you. Um. So. What are some of the challenges you're facing in your work there in Taiwan right now? Well, um, the biggest challenge I personally had was the language, mm. um, language and culture. So Mandarin is just a very, very hard language to master. And no, no one really masters it. Like if people say they're fluent, it's kind of like a spectrum. So wow. you're always kind of skeptical when you hear someone say, oh, I'm fluent in Chinese or something. But so it's a long process. So I preach in Chinese, but it's still like, wow. you know, it's not like speaking in English. And you got to think a lot about what you're going to say, how you're going to say it. Make sure you don't mess up uh, the tones or anything. Wow. So, yeah, just like communication, clear, accurate. And then, you know, making sure you preach the gospel and preach Christ, explain the, the passage. There's just a lot of challenges preaching by itself, but then doing it in Chinese, too. And um, yeah, your illustrations, you got to choose culturally appropriate wow. ones. <laughs> so you got to be watching the news, yeah, talking to people a lot. Right. Like, what are you interested in? What, what are kind of your concerns? Because what yeah. we may be struggling with in America may be different from them right. um, in terms of idols and fears and hopes mm-hmm. and dreams. So it's, yeah, true. there's just you're always learning mm-hmm. and you always feel like, oh, I got to learn more. I got to read more. I got to learn more Chinese. And, So that's kind of a challenge, I would say, for me, um, dealing with, let's say there's a conflict in the church and there's all these cultural kind of issues that you have to work through and how you approach it with wisdom is Mm. is a real challenge for me as as an American. Yeah. Wow. But Annie's a big help. uh, Thank you. I try. (laughs) Well, what are some ways that we as your supporting church can be praying for you? I'm sure you know you're on furlough right now, and, yeah. and so you are you raising support while you're on furlough. Yeah. Is that part of what you're doing? Yeah. And... So this is our first home assignment in mm-hmm. six years. Wow. Uh, we came back for about a month two years ago. So this is you know when we first went to Taiwan we were we didn't have any children and mm-hmm. so now we have three. So yeah, we need to raise up more support during this mm-hmm. time. We have to raise an additional about five hundred dollars. In monthly pledges. It's too late now. Now, yeah. is there a website that um, we've been putting websites up on the bottom of these these um, podcasts? Is there a website that we can send people to to learn more about your ministry and how they can support yeah. you? Yeah, mm-hmm. you can sign up for our prayer letters. Mm-hmm. We send out monthly prayer letters at our website, TaiwanChurchPlanters.com. Okay. So and that'll Ta- be on the bottom yeah, of our TaiwanChurchPlanters.com. And there's an area there if you want to learn about how to support us. Um, so, yeah, please pray for our support raising. Uh, God has been so faithful over the yes. past six years. Right. And sometimes when you're gone a long time, your support really dips down. But God has been really faithful. Mm-hmm. The other prayer request is um, in Matthew 9, Jesus says to pray for this, to send out laborers. Mm-hmm. So we're always praying. God, we need coworkers. Right. We want we want we want to build a team over there to plant more churches, not just one church. But we want to see a whole family of churches established. But we always are like, Lord, we need more coworkers, laborers for the harvest. Right. So Jesus says, pray for that. So please pray for us. Yes. Pray for Taipei, for Taiwan, uh, for our team that we could add more pieces. Definitely need coworkers. Breakfast has never tasted so good. Breakfast with Christ on the shore Breakfast will never be better